Uh, Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News. We've been talking about all things, uh, lots of different things, but of course, uh, conference realignment. Realignment is not even a word that's worthy of using anymore. <laughs> realignment. It's not realignment. This has been uh, smash and rebuild. <laughs> Um, more like that, but uh, when it's all said and done, Rick Patino uh, had a good comment. He said, just separate football. It doesn't have to be the same for basketball and do it regionally. Something similar to, to Chip Kelly said, do it. They have a do it like the NFL model. Said there just needs to be one conference, which in football, which I don't know how that works because that's not really a conference. That's just football. Uh, there's no such thing as just one conference, but um, I, I, it's the Big Ten and the SEC and the Big Twelve are going to be the Big Three. I mean, there's just with the programs. Are, are we putting the Big Twelve in that company? Really? I I'm not saying they're as good as the Big Ten or, or, or the SEC, but they're 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 closer than they are farther away than they are the, the other the ACC and the. I don't know that I would agree with that. I don't think I would. I think the Big Twelve and the ACC are are basically in the same category. Uh, and then whether the Pac-12 can stitch itself together to – I'm not encouraged based on the things that I've read from people who really know the league. Uh, you know, I, I read uh, uh, the terrific uh, John Wilner, who does such a great job of covering the Pac-12, and who was trying to tell their presidents for the last decade, uh, the presidents in the Pac-12, look, you guys, this ship is going off the edge of the earth if you don't turn it around. They he kept – reporting on things that showed the Pac-12 was going in the wrong direction and they never listened. And now it went off the edge of the earth. Uh, he was right. But now he's talking about Stanford and Cal and Oregon State, Washington State looking for new membership. And and he's talking about it, one of the, some of the schools that they're talking about, according to his reporting, are Rice and Tulane. I'm like, like you're, that ship's going to the edge of the earth again. It's like... It, when you start dialing the phone to pick up Tulane, that's when you know your league is done. That's I, I remember I was in Bloomington for some event in 2012, I think it was. 20 I think of Tulane, I think of the Metro Conference. <laughs> I, I, you know, that was when they when it worked. But when when they started playing football with the uh, in in, uh, in, in when, when Conference USA, excuse me, not Conference USA, when the Big East, um. When the Big East, I remember I was in Bloomington. I was in a hotel room in Bloomington, a Fairfield Inn, because I can't remember what event I was doing down there, some kind of practice or a story or something. And Big East had a teleconference to announce they were inviting Tulane. And I knew at that moment, that was the end of the Big East. I knew that all the Catholic schools were going to say, that's it, we're out. So if you're caught, you know, Tulane is a great university. And they've had some very fine athletes and very fine athletic programs. And the next time you and I go to one of their games, Jim, we will double the crowd. That's the way it works at Tulane. Okay. There's just not anybody that's interested. And so don't, if you're the Pac-12 and you're calling Tulane, uh, then you know that, that, that the future project doesn't have any greater leadership or direction than the former project. If you want to grow, if you want to re rebuild the, the, the Pac-12, you start with San Diego State. You, you then go to Vegas. Then you go to Memphis. Then you think about, okay, all right, now we start, now we need some, uh, you know, do we want to go to SMU because it's a big market? Well, we need a little bit of uh, numerical weight, so that's maybe not a bad choice. But those are the places that you go because they have followings. Uh, they, you know, they have potential, growth potential. Like every single league in professional sports wants to be in Vegas. The, the Pac-12 has held their tournament, their basketball tournament in Vegas for more than a decade. Why don't you want UNLV? Like it's not a, you know, it's not always been a great athletic program, but they've had moments where they've been spectacular. And it's a market that's growing. And it's and it's a market that that's the college team. I mean, that that it's a it's a city team. SMU is not Dallas's team. University of Texas is, or Texas A&M. That's, that's, that's the market. It's, it, SMU is not Dallas's team. They just happen to be located in Dallas. Absolutely. And uh, as, as we move forward, so 
the playoffs change. Uh, we Everything is changing. Now we're going to have a 12-team playoff. How are, are they going to – the Pac-12 had an automatic berth. That uh, – what does – the Mountain West and the Pac-12 – I don't know the merger. There, hell, there's nothing left of the Pac-12 uh, other than Washington State and uh, uh, Washington Oregon State, State. Oregon State, and so, the Stanford. I guess, I guess Stanford and Cal, you count them because, but they're not. I don't think that they're going to go into a a, a Mountain West Pac-12 merger. I, I think that they're too big for that. Other than it would give them an easy path to the college football playoffs if those teams merge and form a. a, a a conference again because that's an easy path and we heard that Oregon was possibly content with staying in the Pac-12 because of that reason. Yeah, I, I think if they had been able to get the money to where the Big 12 was, and again, this is another of the Pac-12's failures to be unable to get the money to that level. Uh, uh, I think they all wanted to stay uh, because in the end, or Oregon and Washington are going to the Big Ten, you know, with the possibility of ending up getting more money. But that's in, what, seven years, eight years, the contract runs, the new contract's going to run. Seven, so they're not getting they're not getting full shares, as to, to my understanding. They're not supposed to get full shares until the next deal. So they would have been able to stay in that league and compete for that tournament bid. Uh, and I think that that honestly has value. I think that there were too many that were too quick to run away from it. There was value in it. Uh, but I also think that they were skittish about being uh, strictly streaming. I think that was a little early for them. If it had been a streaming um, cable combination, uh, I think that they would have been maybe, I think they might have been more inclined to uh, to stick with with the uh, with the league if, if 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 a streaming cable combination had put them in the dollar figure they eventually wound up at, they might have been more interested. Uh, so what's next now? Uh, the as we uh, well we come into the season, that's we're going to get to just move forward. But does I think I asked this off air, and so I can't remember. We've talked about so much. Does all does this growth in the Big Ten? Teams like uh, Indiana, Purdue, Maryland, Rutgers, does this give them a little breathing room with, with the dis disillusion of, uh, of the divisions and the ability to not have to be forced to play Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State every year? Is that going to allow some of these teams a little breathing room to maybe grow? Indiana has is, is just, just – this schedule has just destroyed them. Uh, yes. but they also, they're, they're their own worst enemy. They have not made the commitment to football. They need to make a commitment to football as well, but this is an opportunity I think where they can get to, to be competitive. Well, think about how difficult that was being in that division. There are how many, how many schools have football programs big enough that they need a hundred thousand seats to accommodate their fan base. I mean, there, there are probably fewer than 10 in the country in, in Division I that have that. And three, and three of them are in the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. the division. In the same in division. The Big Ten East. That's what I'm saying. You had Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, all 100 plus. I mean, once upon a time, it was just the big house and that was it. But as, as, as the popularity of Buckeye football grew and the popularity of Penn State football grew, uh, they, they got to the point where they could accommodate it. Uh, and so you're going up against that. That's that's a lot of might to go up against. And okay, it gives you the opportunity to pull an upset every now and then, but it it, it beats you down. It wears you down to have to play that kind of of might. Uh, three three what you play nine. That's a third of your league schedule. You play nine league games, and a third of them are against those three teams. That's a lot. So the the redivision of the schedule will be a benefit to Indiana. There's no doubt about that. Now, how much they take advantage of that is up to them. But it's a, it's a huge benefit. But the league does get stronger and deeper with the addition of Oregon and Washington. They did not bring on Arizona State and Arizona, two programs that have never been elite in football. I think Arizona State's maybe had a, a moment or two of, of sunshine, but not much. 
Uh, and it's, it, you, you would have brought them on and that would have been two markets and two, you know, uh, and another great basketball program and one very good one. Uh, but it wouldn't have been as, uh, as deepening to the league in football. Now, of course, that's why they did it. That's why they took Oregon and Washington because they have great fan bases. They have big stadiums. They have, uh, big markets that are interested. Uh, Oregon is not in Portland, but it's, but, but it, it Oregon is one of, if not the team for Portland, uh, which is a reasonable size market. And of course, UW is in Seattle. Um, you know what? The one thing I'll say, I'll say they're doing, Jim, by doing these these deals, is there is the, for those who want to travel to watch their teams play. I mean, there are not ma- very many cooler places to watch a basketball game than Heck Ed. Uh, I don't know what. Then I think it's Alaska Airlines Arena now, but it's Heck uh, Heck Ed Pavilion is like one of the coolest buildings. It's Where is this? Ten. That's that's Washington's gym. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And I I I covered a game there when when I covered the Bearcats Cincinnati. I they played a road game there, and then I went out several times when Washington was very good in the middle part of the two thousands. Uh, for sporting news, I went out to see games there, and it's a, just a cool. It's one of the. It's like the barn, uh, like Allen Fieldhouse, like like Cameron. It's one of those. So another cool thing. And then for football, they have a beautiful stadium oh, yeah. right there on the water. It's really nice. So very known the Sound, baby, the Sound. Yes, and uh, the, the Seattle's a great city to visit. It's one of the really beautiful cities in America. Uh, so it, it, the, the big Ten keeps giving you that, uh, what, what, what now, does, so what does Washington and Seattle, I mean, Seattle, Washington and, and Oregon bring to the big 10 other than those TV markets and yeah. you know, they're good programs, but they well, didn't need them at the end of the day. I think they, you get them at a bargain price, I think is what really was the, uh, the, uh, impetus. Uh, if you think about it, when you have. Uh, let's say Michigan State plays um, Michigan State plays Nebraska. Say, okay, that costs the TV networks a dollar. What you know that that that's what you're paying. You know, not a dollar, but that's you know everybody a hundred percent. Each each of those schools is getting a hundred percent. Now, when you have UCLA play Washington, say that's a Big Ten football game that is part of your package wh- wh- wherever it lands, whether it's a CBS game or a NBC game or a Fox game, that game it, you're getting for 75 cents on the dollar is what is the reality. It, it's a bargain. Uh, Oregon versus USC is a great college football game. And for the foreseeable future, you're getting it 75 cents on the dollar. And so that's the, that's the appeal. And yes, Philip, I was trying not to say anything, you know, too negative. <sighs> But that court, that Oregon basketball court, is it's abysmal. It's bad. Maybe, well, maybe the Big Ten can say, "Hey, if you want us to show go. games from your gym, you got to get a court that doesn't look like that." Maybe they looks can- like a basketball court, boys. Yes, That's right. Yes, maybe Crazy. they can do that. I, I would be all for that. 